Good evening, brethren. Good evening, friends. Good evening, family. We want to welcome you to another of our Wednesday evening program, Restoring and Fortifying Marriages. You already know who I am. I'm Kamika Todd, and I'll just be your host for this evening. Now, the last few weeks have been life-changing for most of us, if not all of us who have been coming on this program each Wednesday evening. We have been getting some wonderful, encouraging feedbacks from persons who have been impacted by the presentations, by the thoughts that are shared. And we want to give God praise for that because that is really our desire. Last week, was it, it was a beautiful discussion. You know, we could laugh, we could we could enjoy the presentation, we could identify with the, with the thoughts that were shared. And we are truly saying this evening that we were grateful for the presentation that the Lord would have allowed his servant to share last week and the discussion that we would have had. This evening is going to be no different. As a matter of fact, I don't, I don't want to sound biased, but I think it's gonna be the best evening of all. And maybe next week I'll be able to say next week will be the best evening. But nevertheless, this evening is going to be awesome because we have a wonderful presentation by a very beautiful woman this evening. Our presenter for this evening is Linda Baker. She is known to all of us on this platform. If you're not new, she is beloved. You know, I, I would describe Sister Linda as somebody who is always seeking for growth, always seeking for answers, and that is truly admirable. She's from the United States, and she has been married for all of 23 years. Yes, so she is no chick, right? 23 years of experience, growth, learning, overcoming, and she is always eager to share her experiences and her knowledge as she goes along. I truly believe that she loves people and wants to see people free. And so our topic that she will be sharing on this evening is cherishing your help meet in marriage. We promised you, and we have come this evening to deliver. The Lord used the servant two weeks ago to deliver a truly challenging yet encouraging and eye-opening presentation on behalf of our men. And, you know, this evening, I believe the Lord is going to use his daughter to share some life-changing thoughts. So take notes, pray while you listen, and ask the Lord for strength to learn whatever it is that you need to learn. Just a reminder to you that you can post your questions in the chat, and we will be definitely looking out for those and asking, asking them at the end of the presentation. You can also share a comment and you might just be blessed enough to be highlighted your comment that you are sharing in the chat. If there is any other topic that you would be interested in hearing on this marriage forum, please type it in the chat and we will take note of that. All right, we are gonna pray at this moment and then we're gonna hand over to Sister Linda for her to take it away, all right? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for the privilege that we have to come together this evening, Lord, to share a thought from your word. Lord, we know you love us, and Lord, we delight to be taught of you. And so, Lord, feed your children this evening. Speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, and help us to hear what you want us to hear. But not only hear, Lord, but give us the grace and the will to practice the things that you would reveal to us that we need to implement in our lives. I pray for Sister Linda in a very special way that you will give her even fresh revelation as she shares what you have laid on her heart. May you give her insight. May you give her wisdom. And Lord, even while she's sharing, may you open her understanding even more. Use her to bless us this evening, O oh Lord. We commit the technology into your hands and ask that you take full control that we may go through smoothly on to the end. We thank you for hearing and we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Welcome, Sister Linda. Welcome, thank you. So happy to be here. So excited for tonight. I will share my screen. Whoops, can you allow me to share my screen? 
All right. Oh, it says I cannot share my screen. Oh, there okay. we go. Okay. Um, PowerPoint. Hmm. It's not allowing me to share my screen. I'm not sure what to do. Hmm. I know, Sister Linda, try. And tell Pardon? me, is it working now? Try again. Um. Yes, it's allowing me to share my screen, but it's not allowing me to open the PowerPoint. It says allow Zoom to share your screen, open system preferences, and allow system privacy to grant. Okay. Sorry about this. Okay, let me try again. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to work. Thinking that, here we go. Thinking, um, so I'm going to share with you, cherishing your help meet in marriage. Can, can somebody just let me know that you see me and hear me? Amen. Okay. Good. So, men, this is your night. Now, I speak to women a lot, and I champion the needs of the men to the women, and I teach the women how to respect and honor and admire their man so that he is a hero to them. But now, tonight, I'm going to speak for the women. I want to truly express what the women are experiencing and what they need. Men, I often hear you say things like, it's so hard to figure women out who can really understand them. But tonight, I wanna to take some of the mystery out of it. I'm going to let some of the secrets out. I'm gonna tell you how to win with your wife and create an incredible marriage. And I'm even going to give you a lifetime guarantee. I guarantee you that if you will really hear me and implement strategies for understanding and cherishing your wife, that your wife will be much more likely to open her heart to you, to admire you, to desire to receive your instruction, to show respect for you and follow your godly leadership. Why can I say that? Because love is the most powerful force in the universe. It creates a vortex that draws and only the mystery of iniquity can resist the pull of love. So when a woman is loved and cherished, she cannot help herself, she automatically submits. That is why in Ephesians, God speaks to the men to the husbands the head and he says in ephesians 5 husbands love your wives even as christ also loved the church and gave himself for it so when it says love your wives it's talking about doing to your wife what christ does to the church in verse 33 it says nevertheless let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband, which we heard about two weeks ago. Colossians 3.19, husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. 
Here I want you to hear from a godly wife. She says, and I quote, when I am cherished, I lovingly submit to please my husband without second thoughts. I do everything with more willingness. So let's go back to the beginning, men. In the beginning, everything was made for man and then man was created and that showed his significance. God gave man gifts. He gave the garden. He gave the animals, the elements. And um, his education for his life work of service was right there in the garden to begin with. He learned about the plants. He named the animals. But as he looked around and did his work, he realized something was missing. He was missing a context. He was missing a foundation. And he told God about it. So God now puts him to sleep. So nothing is in his mind, not his home, not his work, nothing. And his whole focus now is on receiving his ultimate gift that God is cre creating for him. This gift is to be his context his foundation in his world, his work, in his home. God was showing the man that everything else in his life must vanish in comparison to the next and final gift that God had for the man. The animals were created and they were passed before him and he named them, but now he lay there with all those things out of his mind. God created man's primary consideration then, the woman, the helpmeet. And she was the very last of creation. She was brought to the man and presented to him personally. God had already instructed Adam in the garden by using it as an illustration. And now God would present to the man that ultimate flowering plant with luscious fruit. Now God knew men, God knew what he was doing. He created the woman as man's second self. She was the same as the man, but different. So I wanna repeat that. She was the same as the man, but different. And here's a quote for you from Patriarchs and Prophets 46.2. God himself gave Adam a companion. He provided an helpmeet for him, a helper corresponding to him, one who was fitted to be his companion and who could be one with him in love and sympathy. Eve was created from a rib taken from the side of Adam, signifying that she was not to control him as the head, nor to be trampled under his feet as an inferior, but to stand by his side as an equal, to be loved and protected by him. Now notice, a part of man, bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh, she was his second self, showing the close union and the affection attachment that should exist in this relationship. So men, she is your second self. She is the other side of the coin. You, the head on top, her underneath, but not inferior. She is simply creating the foundation, the context. God purposefully shaped the woman inside and out. He gave her gifts and talents and skills that the man would need. He created her with a power that the man did not have. And without that power, the man would be incomplete. Now, she was designed to be exactly what you need. Your wife was designed to be exactly what you need. She was designed to be the center of your world, second to God. Above everything else on earth, you need to give your woman your primary attention, not your children or your home, or your work, your woman, your wife, your helpmeet. 
your primary attention. She is your primary consideration. You can see it from creation. Everything else is to fall into that primary context. When you're working, you need to work with your woman as your primary consideration. When you're playing, you need to play with your woman as your primary consideration. Everything that you do must be done with her as the center of your thoughts to meet her needs, to bring her fulfillment. Therefore, men, if you are not meeting the particular needs of your helpmeet, you are not really valuing, cherishing, prizing the very gift that God has designed specifically for you. So we have the head and the help me, the two sides of the coin. And just as the woman is to recognize the man as her head and respect and honor him, so men, you are to recognize your woman as your help me and love and cherish her. You must understand what it means to have a help me. She is there to meet your need of what? Not being selfish. Men tend, God created them to have this laser focus, almost like blinders on, right? So, and, and it's for a purpose. It's for an important purpose. But given that characteristic of man, he would be very self-absorbed. He would not see anyone but himself. And so his wife there, the other side of himself, she is there to help him not to be selfish. She is there for you to share with as an equal. Now, she was given to you for you to depend on, to depend on for help and even guidance, men. You need to appreciate and highly value her gifts and talents other less hairy man that is all mixed up and confused and emotional and difficult, right? She, in fact, has a power that you do not have, but God is giving you that power in her. She sees a wide stop, so you might so can somebody Hello, start it again? Who is who has been made yours? Um okay, she come back on. Yes. Perfect. Okay, so men, hear me carefully. Your ego, your pride, your strong default need for freedom will try to prevent you, will try to get in the way of you valuing this woman and the power that she has. But you need her. She is God's primary gift to you. You need to appreciate and value her and her gifts, her talents, and put them to use for your advantage. So what are the needs of a woman? Well, as you heard, she needs to be the center of your world, man. God and ministry are of ministry, the primary consideration in your life. She needs to be understood, have attention, appreciation, significance, protection, safety, security, provision. These are some of her needs, which I will go over. So understanding your help meet. Now as the center of his world, the very first thing Adam needed to do was to study his woman, to understand her. He had studied the plants, the flowers, the elements, the animals. He saw the beautiful flowering plants with sweet fruits. He understood that he needed to know their nature, their characteristics, that he needed to learn their needs, their vulnerabilities, what builds them up, what tears them down, what protects them, what they have to offer. His job was to serve those plants, to create an environment where they could flourish and grow, to give them attention, to observe them, admire them, protect them, 
provide for them. And in this education, he learned how to understand his helpmeet and meet her needs and cherish her. So men, do you understand your wife? She has a personality. Do you know what it is? There are four basic types. Have you studied it out? Have you noticed? This personality is her context for how she relates to relationships in the world. It's one of her major contexts. Are you aware of it? She has a love language, a language by which um, she can receive and relate to love and identify these things as love. Now, you probably have a different love language and it's kind of probably like you speak Chinese and she speaks Russian, but are you gonna leave the language barrier or are you going to learn Russian and teach her Chinese? You need to know her love language. She has primary needs and she looks through her primary needs like colored glasses. She sees everything through certainty or through adventure, or through significance, or through love and connection. Do you know which one? Because this need motivates her, drives her. It shapes her whole um, perspective of things. She has talents, skills, abilities. Have you studied them out? Have you taken note? You need to understand them. She's more verbal than you, most likely, because women are created with a larger linguistic center in the brain. So she doesn't just not know how to shut her mouth. She actually has more words floating around in her head. <laughs> she sees and she feels everything at once. And her vision is constantly panoramic, the big picture. She sees from cause to effect in zero to 10 seconds. And she, she already can see what's gonna happen. So let me ask you a question, men. How many of you have spent years in school? A man will spend four to 10 years in school to understand business, medicine, a trade, Yes, but now does your wife feel like you believe she is worth studying? Is she worth your time and attention? Remember, she is your primary. All these other things are to be in the context of her. So there was a time, men, when you hunted her, you chased her, you pursued her. You couldn't keep your mind off her all day long. You had a hard time focusing on your work. You noticed her favorite flavor and color and you wanted to cushion her from the emotional blows of society. And you invested your time and your money and your thought into capturing this woman's affections and you won her. Now, what have you done? Have you continued the pursuit? Are you, are you saying to yourself, if you have not continued the pursuit, are you saying to yourself, but she has changed. I, don't, I didn't really know her. I didn't know she was going to be this way. So difficult. Well, men, hear me. The treasure is still there. You may have to do some deep sea diving. You may have to do some digging. You may have to empty your mind like Adam did of everything else on earth and consider your woman. Your wives, men, they have very strong feelings. Some have very deep hurts. They have deep needs for appreciation and attention and security and recognition. They need to feel seen and heard and understood. And guess what? When they look back, they see that you were full of energy and drive to catch them. Are you putting forth your energy to keep them? Now, are you on another chase? Now, were you pursuing them to have them or to serve them? 
Was it about you and your prowess? Or was it about the value of the one you were pursuing? These are some serious questions to ask yourself. Your wife, remember we're, I, I'm telling you how you can understand your wife. She's not one of the guys. She is not another man. Don't treat her like another man. Men with men, they joke in certain ways. Women usually don't appreciate that. Don't expect your wife to have that laser focus, to be satisfied just checking things off a list. Don't expect her to be stoic. And you know, if a man saw another man with all the emotional fluctuations of a woman, he would probably distance from that man. Don't distance from your wife just because you don't understand because she is different than you. Men tend to focus on getting things done, but women need talk. They need to talk and to be heard. Women, for a woman, proximity is a good enough reason for a conversation, men. She, you're near her, that's good enough. That's a good reason she wants to talk to you. For men, he tends to need a reason to have a conversation. So don't expect her to be like you and need a reason. She just wants to talk to you. Men tend to have this like competition with other men, you know, trying to one up each other, be better, be tougher, the weaker vessel, but it's for a powerful purpose. In 1 Peter 3, 7, it says, likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them, your wives, according to knowledge. So you have to know them and give honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. So you need to honor what's called the weak, the weakness, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. This is serious, brethren. This is serious, men. If you're not knowing your wife, if you're not honoring her particular characteristics and needs, then your prayers can be hindered. This can be salvational. Now, God had to make a woman more delicate. He had to make her more so that she is more easily hurt. He had to give her a deeper, more sensitive emotional nature. Why? Because that is the natural result of the openness he wanted to give her, the nurturing nature that he needed to give her and her ability to see and feel so much at once. But men do not misunderstand. She is not less capable. She is not less intelligent. She is not another man. Your, your wife, your help me needs you to understand her and, she, and you will have to listen. Sometimes the, under, the kind of understanding she needs doesn't have to make sense. She has emotions that she needs to express. She needs you to listen with empathy. Empathy says, have I ever felt this before? Can I relate to what she's saying? She needs you to listen with compassion of something until she feels understood. You may think she has let go of it but it is, she's holding it into her heart. It needs settled. Men, don't try to change her feelings. Don't try to logic her. Accept her emotions. Absorb them. Be strong enough to handle them. Stay there in the presence of those emotions without trying to make them go away. That is what she needs to be understood. These assignments I will post in the chat afterwards. A woman craves attention. So a woman needs craves attention. And men, a woman craves attention. Not because she's childish or insecure, 
because she's wired that way by her creator. She thrives on it. It fuels her. It boosts her energy. It turns her into superwoman. If you gave her attention, she will conquer the world for you. So give her attention. She needs you to tell her that she's beautiful. She needs complimented. She needs you to notice her haircut and her new outfit. When you come home from work, men, don't just go to your chair and turn on the TV or out to the shop to work. She needs you to notice her. She has gotten her hair cut. She has put on a new outfit for you. She needs you to touch her face, cup her face in, her, in your hands and look into her eyes. She needs you to caress her arms and her back and her shoulders and hug her and hold her, not precursors to sex. She needs you to hold eye contact with her and notice her to take her into your mind, to study her, appreciate her, admire her, who she is. She needs you to hold eye contact with her. And I, I, I already just said that, but she needs you to lock your gaze upon her. And she needs to see you enjoying her so that I hope you still do. If you don't, you have allowed something to die. With that eye contact, she needs to hear words, words that caress her soul. Wow, you are amazing. You're a sight for sore eyes. I love coming home to you. You add so much to my life. I love that dress on you. I love the, the picture that you painted. I love, I, I, I'm anxious to hear your presentation. My life would not be the same without you. She needs to hear you. Play your favorite song and dance with her. She needs you to ask her on dates. She needs you to want to be alone with her. Like at the beginning, uninterrupted time, like she's the only one that exists in the world. Now she sees you focus on your work and she sees you talk to people at church and you're so focused on talking to them that she could be waiting for an hour or two in the car. But when she's finally alone with you, does she see you distracted? Does she see you on your phone? Are you late to your appointment with her because you had to talk to other people because you didn't prioritize your appointment with her? It can feel like your mind is on everyone and everything else except her. It can show her how you value her. If you do not prioritize her, then you are not placing the value on her that she truly has. She needs you to plan special events for the two of you. Don't let her do all the planning. She needs to know that you take initiative and you want to be with her enough to plan something. When you look at her, she needs to see the shining and a spark in your eyes. Now hint, men, you're gonna wanna hear this. If you'll do even one of these things regularly, she will most likely excitedly be led to the bedroom and she will not end up feeling like she's just a tool from your workbench for you to use to get a release. And she will not end up feeling having an empty heart. This is a serious thing, man. Very serious. Now, she needs you to do chores with her, wash dishes with her. And while you do it, bring charm into it. Have a hard time keeping your eyes off her. Laugh, make jokes. Um, make it fun. She needs you to open doors for her with a flourish and a wink like she is the queen. She is the queen. When you're on your phone and she speaks to you, stop. I have a friend. And whenever I call and talk to this friend, I will hear his wife in the background speak to him. And whenever she speaks to him, he immediately says to me, just minute and he will hear her she is first consideration men flirt with your wife play and laugh with her 
When you see her with a heavy load, carry it for her with a twinkle in your eye. When you notice her sad and upset, stop and take time to listen. So she needs understood. She needs attention and she needs appreciation and she needs to know that you recognize her significance. Now God gave her her significance, but she wants to know that you see it. She needs to hear that you see it. Ask her for her input. Ask her for her perspective and then listen to her without interrupting. Don't say, I already thought of that. Expect her to have a new angle, a widened perspective and show her appreciation. Now, now my brothers, your wife can notice if you come home and you share somebody else's advice that she already gave you, but you ignored. And she is seeing, if you do that, that you are not valuing her. Now, men, you need to take seriously her panoramic perspective. Don't call it a killjoy. Don't say she's controlling you. Don't say she's manipulating or micromanaging or telling you what to do. No. Remember? God gave this gift to you in her. It is for you. You can rejoice in it. Always ask your wife what her preference is. Ask for her input in public. Let it be as worthy of promoting as the other people's ideas. She feels it. If you seem so interested in and agreeable to another woman's choice of a restaurant, a dessert, an activity, when she sees that it charms you to give them what they want, it hurts deeply if it doesn't, if you don't care and ask for her opinion and prize it as well. Champion her talents and her abilities. Use them to everyone's advantage. Put her on the spotlight. Support her growth, her development. Let her know how her presence with all of her abilities make a difference for you. How do they contribute to making life better for you? Now, men, you can feel like being the head or the man means that you have to make all the decisions and you have to have all the expertise and all the talent. And she can end up feeling like a sidecar, a come along, a third wheel, third wheel in two people. She needs to feel like her husband sees her talents and admires her perspective abilities, perceptive abilities, and is not threatened by them. She needs to know that you are strong enough in your God-given value to even handle a woman that would have more ability than you in certain areas. If you feel like a failure because you're not as good at her at everything, then you will tend to be resentful of her abilities and not supportive. And she will feel like it is not safe to be her true self. Men, claim her in public. Make sure everybody knows, this is my girl. She belongs with me. It's so easy for you to ignore her, be oblivious of her, for her to seem like part of the, and feel like part of the woodwork, the wallpaper, like the maid, the babysitter, just the person behind the scenes and making everything work. Find someone to, to cover for her behind the scenes and bring her out and put her on show in front of everyone for her to be able to talk and to relate and let them see her value and her significance by how you treat her. Never embarrass her, never make jokes about her whether she's there or not. So 
she wants to hear you with a we're in this together um, attitude. She, she needs you to communicate your plans and when your plans change and to actually want to share what you're doing with her. Why? Not because she's trying to hover or control or she's judging you. She's craving collaboration, recognition, a team spirit, a way to promote you actually. So don't give your wife the crumbs. She may see you on the phone for hours with other people, relating to other men and women. She may see you treating them kindly, giving them attention, teasing, lifting them up in value, laughing, connecting with them, patient with them, appreciating them. But she may be see receiving an attitude. She may be seeing that you can't relate to her. She may be getting anger, silence, she may be ignored. She may be criticized for not doing things perfectly enough or saying things just wrong. She may get your frustration, your impatience, and even your withdrawal. And this is devastating to your helpmeet. This totally cuts the marriage. This cuts, this cuts the safety and the security, which we will come to next. It shows her men that you do not value her as much as you do other people or yourself. So men, you are living your priorities. Don't say, well, I really do have this and this, I am, this is important to me. Examine yourself because what you are doing, how you are spending your time, where you are putting your attention, your attitude, your mental and emotional investment, this is revealing your priorities. Be honest with yourself. Examine yourself. <coughs> Excuse me. Do you say she's important to me? She's the most important thing to me. I love her. I know her. I appreciate her. I value her. And at the same time, you don't ask her on a date or you don't compliment her or you don't listen to her or you miss your meeting time with her or you tell her you're going to do, do something for her but you never get around to it. You have energy to talk to friends on the phone and so on to help them but you're too tired to listen and talk to your wife. This is revealing your priorities take it seriously. Your wife sees it. And if she is your priority, she knows it. And it thrills her. And it creates a safe, strong relationship. Men, your wife's value is already set. You can't determine it. And you can't, you can't remove it, damage it, change it. You can't. God has set her value. But by the way you treat her, you can make it really hard for her to believe it. Are you recognizing it? Or are you undermining her value? Are you placing the same value on her that God does? Your priorities and your treatment of her are telling the story. And she is reading the story loud and clear. So how is she feeling? A woman also needs protection, safety, security. This is a very primary need, a very basic survival need. She needs physical, emotional, and social safety. She needs to know that she will be protected from physical harm and danger. She knows that you're stronger than her and that she needs this protection. She feels it. She needs a marriage that is emotionally safe so she can be H-O-T, honest, open, transparent with you. She needs a safe place to be valued, to open up, to grow. She needs to know you will stand up for her with family and friends and not allow her to be mistreated. She needs to know that you will not embarrass her. 
She needs to know that you will protect her reputation, that you have her back and you believe in her and that you will never expose her faults and errors. And first and foremost, that you will never withdraw your love under any circumstances, no matter what mistakes she makes, never. Now there was an experiment that was done at a marriage seminar and there was probably a hundred couples there. And the presenter asked the women, um, the presenter said to the women, if you have felt concerned and fear for your safety in the last month, raise your hand. Every woman rose her hand. And then she said, have you felt it in the last week? And every woman rose her hand. Have you felt it today? Every woman rose her hand. And then they asked the men, in the last month, have you felt concern for your safety? And a couple men raised their hands. In the last week, no men raised their hands. In the last, in today, no men raised their hands. Men, women are not men. They are not like you. They know their vulnerability and they need your protection. And they feel it. <coughs> How do you protect them? Number one, never mention divorce as a solution. Never. I don't care how hopeless you think it looks. Never. It will completely undermine her security. Give her an attitude of it's us against the world. It's us against the world. The world may be against us. Other people may not like you, but it's us against the world. This will give her safety, security, protection, from judgment and criticism. Men, lead her with a plan, with firmness, with assertiveness, but let it always be based on direction from the word of God. And take that word of God and show it to her and reveal it to her. Men, be a safe place to open up. Don't throw back at her in her face later what she tells you now. Don't interrupt her or argue with her feelings or tell her that she doesn't make sense. Don't be distracted. Put your phone away. Stop doing what you're doing. Look at her. Don't listen to make her wrong, to blame her. Don't try to solve her problems at first. She needs to talk first. When you're walking in public places, men, stay close to her, hold her hand. Let her know that you know she needs your protection and that you're there for her. When she expresses concern over her safety, don't make fun of her. Don't tell her that she's just too afraid and she's just a chicken. Make her feel safe. Never allow the children to show her disrespect. That will give her a safe environment. She will see you standing up for her protection. Um, forgive her for mistakes and don't freeze her in the past. And don't punish her for her mistakes. Don't bring them back and beat her on the head with them. Speak to her with transparency, not in vague dismissive ways. She will not feel safe and secure if you're vague and dismissive. Lead your wife to the word of God for solutions. Pray with her. And when men, B-H-O-T, honest, open, transparent, protect the relationship. If you say one thing, and she knows it's another, it cuts the trust and the safety and the security. When she sees you hiding your messages on your phone, making secret phone calls, being less than transparent, trying to get away from her to do things without you knowing, <clears throat> without her knowing, sorry. All of this is not open and transparent and she, she feels it. 
and it totally undermines the sequency of, of her husband's emotions. And she decoded those emotional messages when her husband was pursuing her. She knows them well. When she is watching him relate to another woman at church, at a social gathering, or wherever it may be, she will recognize the spark, the attention that used to come her way. She can pick up the emotional frequencies of attraction and affection, subliminal and silent to the other woman. Men, know yourselves. If this applies to you, don't try to make your wife believe that she's just over, overreacting and suspicious. Be honest, open, transparent. If indeed you are struggling with an emotional pull toward another woman, be honest with yourself and don't make excuses. Don't say things like, well, I'm just ministering to her and she really needs my help and she doesn't have anyone else to talk to. And you know, um, those can be truths, but men know yourself. If you're going to be faithful to your wife, if you're not connected to God, involve your wife in your relationships with females. Don't say anything to another woman that you would not want your wife to hear. Do not entertain a woman sharing deep personal and emotional things with you that would have to be kept in confidence. That is a very slippery slope. Men, take hold of God. Embrace your own value. Take responsibility for your own triggers. Don't blame them on your wife. Don't blame them on your children. Don't blame them on circumstances. As long as you're blaming, nothing can change. As long as you blame something else, you have to be waiting for the other thing to change. Admit your faults. Admit your own triggers. Own them. Admit your mistakes and learn from them. And don't think that your wife is gonna respect you less. She's gonna respect you greatly when she sees your honesty, your openness. So uh, men, your wife needs you to provide for her. She needs a home that is comfortable, safe, that is a place where she can make a nest. She needs transportation so she has freedom to go here and there. She needs food, quality food. She needs clothes that are attractive on her for the children. She needs tools and resources so that she can take care of her responsibilities without working her fingers to the bone. She needs you to support her health, to make provision for her health. If she has health issues, she doesn't want to seem like a burden to you. She wants to see that you are grateful to help her. <clears throat> she needs to see that you are happy to invest in her growth and development, that you provide her with funds, opportunities, time to grow and develop. And she needs you to provide her adventure and social activities with you. Don't leave her isolated. Do not leave her isolated. I don't care what your personality is. You must find a way to have a social life with your wife. Now, men, if, a, if a, a wife is a stay-at-home mom, it is so easy for her to feel like she doesn't have a right to the money because she's not out there making it. Never mind that you couldn't be out there making it like you are without her. But she needs to know that everything you do is for her sake. Everything you do is with her in your mind that it's not 
yours and mine, it's ours. So let's address a question that Elder Leach asked a couple weeks ago. He said something like, why is it so husband and to be accountable to him, right? So I think men that you have seen by now that if your wife is not seen, if she is not heard, if she is not understood, cherished, according to the value that her creator placed in her, if she sees you moved by the approval of others, working for the acceptance of others, controlled by others, how, how can she consider that your instructions are actually relevant to her? She's not the center of your world. You're, she's not your primary consideration and you're not treating her like God does. How can those instructions be from God? How can they be safe? Just some questions to think about, some pretty serious questions. So just to finish up, men, some things not to do. Don't allow yourself to feel threatened by her strengths and subtly, if not so subtly, hold her back from growth, from development. Don't tell her that she is just trying to control you when she displays her strong ability to organize and plan. And when she points out a possible pitfall down the road of some idea that you have. Don't withdraw from her and try to do things without discussing them just because you want to feel free from this control that isn't really control. Because remember, God gave her this power for your sake. Don't give up on her and blame her and react in anger and resentment because you start to cherish her and she tests your commitment. She has to come to feel secure. She needs to see that you will continue. Don't believe the lie that you somehow have to get away from her in order to obtain your freedom, your space, you have, you should have your individuality, your freedom and your space, but don't use those to neglect her and treat her like she's trapping you. When she opens up to express a, a need or a hurt, don't tell her that it's just the weakness in her personality coming out. Hear her need, hear the hurt. And in fact, if she has some weaknesses in her personality, you can look for opportunities to encourage those to strengthen without disapproval and criticism. Don't go to bed and leave your wife up to finish the work, men. She's tired too. Help her finish the work and then go to bed together like a team. Don't come home from work and expect to just rest and be on your phone while she works the whole evening and takes care of the needs of the family. This is equal partnership. Why should she work 18 hours and you work eight? It's not women's work, it's family work. Now, men, I'm not saying you work only eight hours. That's for the power of comparison. But how many times? Have you been sitting resting while your wife still has to do the dishes, do the laundry, clean up the house after the day with the children, put the children to bed? Yes. So don't leave her to care for the children 24 seven. She needs a break. She needs to see you relating fondly and connecting with your children. She needs your participation in the discipline she needs time. She needs time to have a break from the constant pull of children on her mind. She needs time to study how to be a better mother. Men, don't call her high maintenance. Her maintenance is equal to her value and don't forget it. 
Don't inconvenience her to make things easy for someone else. So don't take from her something that she needs in order to give it to someone and get their warm, fuzzy appreciation. Don't, when you're driving down the road, so want to protect the driver behind you from having to slow down that you just jet around the corner and throw her around in the car. Men, don't text and drive. Don't text and drive. Don't text and drive. You are not showing her her value when you text and drive. You are putting her in danger and she does not feel secure. And you are undermining the very primary need that she has for safety. And if you text and drive when you're alone, what do you think that does for her? That only makes her afraid of losing her husband. Texting and driving is dangerous. Don't make excuses and fool yourself. Oh, nothing's happened yet. No. Men, don't bring your phone to the bedroom. You know, when you bring your phone to the bedroom, you're bringing someone else into that private place. Don't bring your phone to the table. Leave your phone in your pocket on a date and only use it for 911 emergencies, so to speak. Don't micromanage your wife. Respect her individuality and, free and her freedom. Don't tell her how to do her work. You can learn together, but don't tell her. Don't tell her how to drive. Don't tell her where to park. <laughs> she has a brain. Right, so now, to end my presentation, I want to give you the best. I want to tell you some stories and I want to brag on my husband. Um, a, a couple months ago, I don't know how long, James had to go on a trip to Washington State. And while he was there, he had, he, he texted me one day. I need some of your skill. And then he called me and he said, babe, I have this and this and this and this and this and this place and this place and all this to do. Can you please help me with this planning? Because you see the big picture better than I do. You see my husband honoring, honoring my panoramic vision. Now, <clears throat> Another time, he was considering two different jobs recently. And, it, you know, it was, it was hard to figure out which one was more advantageous than the other just by uh, a quick, quick glance. And so I told him, just a minute, let me figure, let me do some figures. And he watched me and I figured and I took all the variables and I put them all out there so that he could quickly and easily see the difference between these two jobs. And he said to me, wow, I saw how you did that. And what does that do for me? He's appreciating, he's recognizing, he's showing me that what I have to contribute is significant. And then, and it figured out he said well i know somebody who's good at that and he winked at me what do you think is he cherishing his helpmeet i sure felt cherished another story uh, a few days ago we were talking with some other couples about property and houses and where to live and where to go. And um, the two other wives were talking about wanting a house. Well, I, we sold our house and I have a fifth wheel. And I said, when we were talking to everyone, well, um, I'm okay being in my fifth wheel for now, at least. Well, the other day when, when James and I were just here, together, I started thinking about that. And I started remembering my dreams of a home in the country 
that always I had since childhood. And even that James and I had shared when we first had gotten married. And I started telling him my dreams, my desires for a home. And he, he started to verbally deflect and he started to logic it away. He started telling me things like, well, we really don't need it now because our children are out of the home and we don't really want to spend the time and the money. And I could feel my heart shrinking a little. I could feel myself saying in my, well, this isn't a safe place to share my dreams and my desires. This isn't a place where, I, where they can be appreciated and understood. But all of a sudden, James said, wait a minute, you're telling me your dreams and your desires, I'm sorry. You don't need logic right now. I want to hear your dreams and desires. And he looked at me and he listened. And I shared my dream for a, for a house, a home. And then I said at the end, but you know what? The house is not nearly as important to me as you. And I would never want to put the pressure on you and the stress on you of providing for me something to that extent because our relationship is way more important. If I can have you and we can, we can be close and love each other, I live in a fifth wheel the rest of my life. Now, another time, the same day, I was sharing with him something that I was, that I was planning to share on this um, presentation. And he was on his phone, distracted, and I was just talking because why? Because for women, proximity is a good enough reason for a conversation. He was here and I just loved to talk to him. Well, he all of a sudden sat up and said, oh, and he got up and he sat down right across from me and he pulled my chair close to his and he said, I'm sorry, I was distracted. I wasn't hearing you, but I want to hear you. Please tell me again. And so I told him again, brothers, brothers, do you hear how easy it is to please your wife, to make her happy, to thrill her heart? You know, I told him later, James, I would conquer the world for you. When you listen to me and appreciate me, I would do anything. Men. How much does it actually cost you to give some appreciation to your wife, to your woman? And how much does it do for her? That little thing, it ravishes her heart. You are not going to change your marriage by solving your argu arguments. You're not going to change your marriage by showing her that she's wrong. You're not going to change your marriage by reforming her bad habits by proving that you are right, these will never work, men. If you will water the plant, if you will protect it from the bugs, from your own attitudes and frustration and impatience, if you will feed it, if you will shine on it, if you will refuse to trample it or allow it to be trampled, if you will look at it, Consider it, enjoy it, put it first. It will grow and you will discover every day how much more beautiful it is. So to love, to cherish, you must be like Adam over and over again intentionally. You must recognize your need of the context of a foundation, of a help meet, and you must Appreciate the one God has given you and empty your mind of your occupations, your work, your adventures, your phone, and consider your woman. Consider your helpmeet. I don't care how difficult she may seem, men. Often a difficult woman has just never been treated according to her value. And I've already told you the secret. She cannot resist love. She will automatically submit. Now, women, 
I want you to do me a favor. And in the chat, I want you to put yes, if that is true. Is it true that if you were loved and cherished, if you had attention and appreciation and protection, that you would automatically submit to your man? Please let him see, let him see in the chat that it is true. And of course, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe I am. All right. Ooh, what is that? Hello? Can anybody see me? Why is yeah, this? Yeah, I hear you well, but your video has been given this flicker for a while. Oh, really? What should I do? Um, probably take off your, you, you are on a bit of a background. No, I don't have a background. That's just my house, my, there we okay, go. There you go. Hmm. It says that you have a background then. Well, that's a little better, but it's still strange. Yeah. All right. Well, so. I do hope that I have rightly represented the women. And I do hope, men, that you have kept your mind open, that you have been honest with yourself to see what you could implement. Thank you so much, Sister Linda, for sharing those thoughts. I am a woman and I can definitely agree with every single word that you shared. And our ladies were typing in the chat and they were saying, yes, Sister Linda, you are on point. She truly spoke, you know, for the women tonight. I, 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 I would like to say that I don't know if anyone else would have covered the topic so well as Sister Linda did. And I think that all the Lord has been teaching her over the last few years has really brought change into her life. And you can see it and you can hear it. So we really praise the Lord for those thoughts tonight that were shared. If my internet goes bad, um, Sister Nella might have to jump in and just continue, you know, if anything happens. Sister Linda, thank you for those thoughts. <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> I was reading the chat. <laughs> you represented me well. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise amen. You know, we, we truly appreciate those thoughts. Now we are going to ask some questions. You know, the chat was blazing with questions and thoughts and some very profound thoughts that stood out. You know, one of the thoughts that stood out is that a woman cannot resist love. A woman cannot resist love. She is wired that way. You know, I heard you, you, you ask a question. What was the purpose of pursuing your woman, men? Was it to show your prowess? Was it for love? Was it to serve her? And that, that thought stood out to my mind. Now, Sister, Sister Nella, do you have some questions for us? Right. Um, well, she just dropped off. Can you have a godly man who gives his wife everything she needs, but she still refuses to submit? A godly man gives the woman what he believes she needs, yet she refuses. Can she still refuse to submit? You're asking me? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> well, here's the thing. There is a thing called the mystery of iniquity, but only the mystery of iniquity could resist love. And men, I want to caution you. I want to caution you against believing too easily that you are giving her everything she needs. 
that you are treating her the way she needs to be treated if she is not responding. <clears throat> I think it is extremely rare. I have never known of a case. Well, I know I haven't known every case, but maybe the man is not really understanding and seeing. And of course, I have to say, <coughs> I work with women and not just women, but men can have a lot of trauma from childhood and this can really block them. But love and cherishing attention coming from a man that is not codependence, that is not given in expectation to get something. Men, if you give to get, that's not it. That is selfishness. That is codependence. Sister Kamika? Yes, I'm here, Sister Nella. You know, Sister Linda, you made a powerful point. You know, only the mystery of iniquity resists love. Um, you, 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 you gave us a caution there that men should not be quick to think that, you know, that they are really giving everything to their woman. But what if we have a legitimate case where there is actually a woman who the, the man is doing everything he knows? And she, she refuses to communicate. She refuses to, she just, she, she's just outrightly re resisting whatever he does. How, how, how do we deal with a case like that? Sounds like a good one to ask Demetrius at the moment. <clears throat> I see him itching to talk about it. Yes, yes. No, that is one of the things. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, Sister Linda, and uh, you said that uh, you see me itching in and uh, to answer, and uh, that is one of the things about women. Women can see a lot of things, and it don't necessarily mean that it is actually so. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but the fact is, look, we are living in a very sinful world, and even in the perfect world where you had Adam and Eve. Remember, Eve wandered away from her husband's society, which she should not have. And he was more caught up in his labor rather than uh, paying attention to where his wife was. And, uh, and this was in a perfect environment. Therefore, what we need to do is to understand that these things do happen. And it is not, uh, and th there must be that level of understanding of bo on both sides where the man may think truly, yes, I am doing everything that I, am, I can. And uh, in reality, he is doing everything that he perceived that he can because he's he's providing. And I can hear I hear some of them say this. You know, he's a good provider, but did you hear that? He's a good provider, but and uh, that but is very instructive. It can be he's a good provider. He looks after the physical needs, but he's falling short of those most important needs, and that is the social and spiritual needs of the woman. And it can be that the woman is not contented. So on both sides, you can have some problems there working. But speaking to the men, I would definitely say, if in fact the woman is not contented, it takes now a step backwards and an introspection. Am I really definitely doing all that I can? Thank you very much for that response, Ella Leach. Um, we, we have, so I suppose that most of us on here are Christians and we believe the Bible. Is it a case where you can have a woman behaving like that that is just definitely unconverted? Ella Leach? That, that is for me? Yes. Oh yeah. I, but, but... But the fact is, this is very important, that the fact is that we are living in a sinful world and the majority, listen to me very carefully, especially those who are courting, the majority of people who are congregationalists are not Christians. Wow. Let me say that again. They're not Christians, they're born again, 
experience is a rare, is a rare experience. Mm-hmm. And therefore, oftentimes when you are congregating with a person, you believe that you are equally young, <clears throat> when in fact the person, if you go a little deeper, they are not really converted. That is so for both women and men. And uh, even Peter, now, now you can also have a case like this. A person can be a true Christian, born again, but they need some additional instruction. Remember Peter? Mm-hmm. Peter was washed. That's why Christ told him, you don't need for me to wash your head and your feet uh, and your hands. I just need to wash your feet because you have already been plunged. Mm-hmm. But he told him afterwards that when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. So there's some, there was some instruction that Peter needed that would assist him. And uh, that is why we have these marriage sessions. Marriage sessions, why? Because even though you can have converted individuals, they may need instruction. some uh, education, some instruction, so that they would then be able to modify their behavior towards their spouses. That is why Jesus says, teach, baptize, and go on to teach by giving instruction as to how to function. We need these marriage sessions. Thank you very much for that response. Elder Leach, Sister Nella, do we have another question? So the other question is, women see things that men do not see. Is it possible that this ability causes her to see and and interpret things that are not there? So this is a strength in women, but can it also be a weakness, Sister Linda? Definitely. Um, Actually, it can be a weakness and men also they can easily see things that are not there imagination you know um yes so so by no means are we saying that um a woman's perception is flawless (laughs) right but we but i was pointing out that she has a different type of perception than a man tends to have. It is more panoramic. It is, um, it is a big picture. It is seeing and feeling everything going on at once. And I talked about the antenna that, that can pick up the emotional vibes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Linda. No. Ella Kisto, I want to pass this one on to you. You have been married for as almost as long as I've been around, right? Has there ever been any point in time when you have experienced where your wife's perception really helped you in, in whatever given situation it was? Can you attest to this fact as somebody who has been married for so long? Well, not good night, everybody. Thank you very much. And just let me just put a plug. Uh, thank you very much, Linda. I, I was thinking that um, that prior to the question that um, we should just go home, lock off this program, and start working out things with your wife. You know, to, you know, to compound it with more questions to put more fuel to the fire. Just go to bed <laughs> and finish all the night. But. Um, <laughs> I I I um I, I believe even in my experience, my wife has all she she has this I, I like the term the panoramic view. She may not be logical, but she her vision of things um has always but not always, but for, for the most part, she, she would see things, she would she would know things. So some of the things that Linda would have expressed, you, you come to learn it lately. For example, um I hope James would have asked her, um, I need your planning ability. I think mm-hmm. we, we, we are now at the place where we're saying, yes, your input on these things are important. So yes, so I, I would not write off um, things as wife, if you have a wife like Pilot's wife warning us, leave that innocent man alone or don't get involved in that situation. Um, just recently, somebody wanted to get into business with us, <clears throat> with her more so. And as good as it looked, I and all found it was looking really good. 
and she has a serious premonition about it. Yeah, we, we, it it's not worked out yet. We haven't seen it come to um, fruition, but I trust her judgment because I don't want to go beyond that and then it just falls apart. So yes, it, indeed, um, in my experience over the length of time, yeah, I, I can trust my wife's judgment. It is not just a perception. It, it's really a, you know, a vision, visionary, so to speak. Thank you very much, Elakista, for that point. Sister Nella, our next question. Um, can, can we I, can I make a point on that? Because go right ahead, Go right ahead. Yeah, I, and uh, I, I think that we fail to recognize the importance of that skill, those antennas that. Linda spoke about, they are real. Women do have that sense and uh, that panorama. Now it must be understood that though they pick up the feelings, it may not necessarily be that they're interpreting. It is an alarm. An alarm does not tell you exactly what is happening, but it tells you there is danger. And therefore, Watch out. So it would give you something the opportunity to be cognizant that she may not necessarily be correct in her interpretation of the alarm. The alarm is hers, but now it is a call for, for both of them to sit down, analyze, being hot honest, open, and transparent with each other in looking at what this alarm is saying. Um, if you have a wife that dreams, my wife dreams a lot, it, many of those things came to pass in an absolutely amazing way. You, you sit down and you talk. Um, without direct communication with her, but... Um, how can he learn her heart? How can he learn? I mean, just like we were talking about um, a woman's perception and that the alarm goes, but she may not know how to interpret it correctly. How can he properly interpret what's going on? Who his wife is, how she feels, why she feels that way, um, what, she, what, what she needs, what is you know, the cause and effect happening in her experience if there's no intentional communication. Intentional, open, honest. Hey, um, you know, I picked up this. I, I got this vibe. Is this really what's happening? Um, I, I sense that something is, is bothering you. What, you know, intentional. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sister Linda. Ella okay, so we just heard the female's communication is. From a man's perspective, what could be a... Well, yeah, you know, I have to refer again to Linda. The fact that you are in, the, in, in proximity, um, we need to talk, all right? We are in proximity. That, that is the, in the same space. It is a gender for communication. Secondly... Um, it's like a date, you know, the children are pushed out of this meeting. So this is the opportunity now for you to really get into the whole mind of the other person. Some of the counters to that would be, as Linda said again, the phone, you know, you're distracted, you know, you're reading something and you're talking and really, you know, your wife picks up, you're really not listening to me, phone, um, the, 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 the dreaded notification on your phone, the ping, you know, you just, it's just lose all concentration and you respond to the ping. Sometimes too, what, what hinders communication, because men are logical, we start planning our days, days in advance, or even as we wake up in the morning and we're on the bed lying down, when it's a nice time for intentional communication and other activities, your mind is now progressively looking at what is going to happen today so these things are these things these things take it away another thing too is um you know just slowing down we need to slow down and put a lot of things in their 
um, perspective and also in their order because our, our wife is our most important subject, object, asset. So you have to sometimes forget that, in, that important person that we need to talk to or that important thing that we need to do in the yard, all things being equal. So there, there are a lot of counters to it, but I think it, it is one of those creeds that is really dying because we have become extremely busy. We live in different worlds sometimes. Sometimes in our desire to progress and to get a better state of living, we lose the intentional communication and our communication is about the object that we are trying to achieve. So these are things that are, that are critical and it can really dampen what we should be seeking to build at this time. Fantastic response. Yes, Sister Lino? Yes. Okay. So while he was talking, I thought of something excellent to recommend to you. I'm video. Um, there's a man named Arthur Ahrens, A-R-A-R-O-N-S. Arthur Ahrens, I think is how. Anyway, he, he is a psychologist who was studying attachment between people. And he, he did some experiments and he, he drafted a list of, of 36 questions. And the questions start out with things that are just um, not intimate, but, but very surface. And they get deeper and deeper and deeper. And then he did experiments having people, groups of two people. I mean, they could be a couple or they could just be two people go through and, and answer these questions in order. Questions that help you talk about. Anyway, um, I found this online and I copied it. And um, James and I have had two dates now where we're sitting across the table from each other after we ate and we are going through in order these questions. And we're finding it amazing. In his experimentation, he found that, that going through the questions by the time they got to the end, that it really created bonds and attachment between the people. So, I mean, this is like an intentional communication. This is, and I just had to share that with you. Intentional communication is vital to build. Thank you, Sister Cylinder. Vital, crucial, and necessary. We have a next question on the board, and we're going to first send that out to Elder Ken. So put your camera back on, and then we're going to go on. Whenever we're talking about history and numbers, I like to refer to our in-house historian. Linda mentioned in her presentation that Eve was the perfect counterpart. Can we say that after 4,000 years of sin, that the wife can still be that perfect help meet. Ella Ken, welcome to the discussion. We're glad to have you. Whenever I go back in time, I, I, I like to refer to you. So Linda mentioned in her presentation that Eve was the perfect counterpart. But after the year, after the world has been tarnished by sin for over 4,000 years, can we still say that a wife could possibly be that perfect help meet? Um, good evening, everyone. Hello. Sin has certainly done its damage, but I do believe so. And, and I guess it has to do with my understanding or my definition of what really helped me to really, I mean, at least the primary, you know, implication of that word, help me. I look at it because I, I see that um, well, we have all kinds of definitions that come up regarding help me. It's tragically misunderstood, I mean, for centuries, but Adam was made in God's image. They both were. And, you know, God is love. Both of them were made in God's image. Eve was created for Adam to serve. I mean, not just to help like being an assistant, but also to help him to realize a greater dimension of himself. Eve was created for Adam to serve, to minister to, for Adam to give of himself to, to build her up, to nurture and to build her up so that in the process of doing so, he could enter into the fullness of God and love, which is pure unselfishness. So he needed a helper so he could 
know and experience a bit of how the Godhead functions in their ministry to each other in self-giving love. And as Eve received the love from Adam, she would let that love flow back to Adam, thus completing that circular flow of love, you know, fulfilling in humanity. And as children are added, it would expand that love into new dimensions, thus making the earthly family more of a reflection of the heavenly one. So I guess um, the, the more, <laughs> I guess sin has added this, it's, it's, um, it's difficult to see the process, but I guess it means that the, the work, um, you know, the more challenging the situation can be, it creates an opportunity for a deeper depth of love, a reflection of God's character to be revealed. So in terms of being someone, for the person to love under all circumstances, yes, she can be the perfect help meet, yes. Amen. Well, as I said, Linda is mentioned in the female's perspective, so I think she would automatically say, yes, we can. Ella Kisto, I like when my elders smile. It tells me that there's a thought lingering in their mind and we want that thought to come out. After 4,000 years of a tarnished, sin-ridden world, can women today actually occupy the position based on the principle established in the Bible of a woman being the helpmeet to a man? Is it yeah, yeah, definitely. This brethren, without a doubt, you know, I, I want God to be true and every man a liar. The fact that it is established in the word, it is so, and it, it, it is so. I, you don't, as Linda said again, God has created this woman with a purpose. She may not understand the purpose because she's been beaten down by circumstances, a husband that doesn't understand his purpose either. But I, I, you see it, you, you even see it in families that are not quote unquote Christians. You see that type of um, help meet separating the two words now, help meet for him. And um, you, you, I, I see most this is what they want to do. It's not something, even if we live in a postmodern world where this seems to be outdated and archaic and, you know, back for the old days. But there are women who, even young modern women, they say clearly they want to be able to have a man that they can be a help meet for him and to, to serve him in, in the true sense of the word because that love is reciprocated and it just the circle, the cycle continues. So I, I give an example. So yes. if, so if God's amen. word have to remain true to date, then therefore the possibility must exist. Sister Linda, before we go forward, I just want to add a, a little addition to that question. So in the, in the sense of Eve, as we refer back and we progress forward, when Eve wandered off in the Garden of Eden, was it as a result of the neglect of her husband? Or was she carrying about her duties as a helpmeet and minding her own business? What was it exactly? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It could have been both. Um, it could have been um, <clears throat> neglect on both of their parts to keep track of each other. It could have been distraction. But um, based on the biblical account, we saw that an instruction was given not to leave the side of your husband. So if we throw that into the mix, would it be that she put herself in a position by wandering away? Or was it as a result of the neglect of Adam to not ensure that she stayed by her side, by his side? Yes, and yes. Ella Leach? <laughs> well, you see, even in a perfect world, circumstances can happen, which are not necessarily wrong, but can lead to wrong unless corrected. Therefore, the fact is that 4,000 years, 6,000 years removed from uh, the Garden of Eden, the woman is the only one that has been corrupted by sin, not the man. <laughs> Men believe that, right? Mm. That is why they always blame the women for the problems. Mm. It is because of her. The fact is, the fact is that we are all imperfect. And a woman can be our perfect helpmeet at this time because we are too imperfect. 
people way back to that sort of concern that you were suggesting in intentional communication. Linda, I think that you should put that that those questions there as a project for our married couples. They don't speak together about themselves. Intentional communication. So we now need to understand, yes, I want to become the perfect head of my home, and the wife wants to become the perfect help me in the home, and therefore they need to sit and talk intentionally to figure out together how they can do it. And you know, people don't like to hear that they are wrong. Mm. People don't like to hear that they have made a mistake, whether you are male or female. But the fact is, if we open ourselves, and uh, you know, it, it, I, I am a human being, and uh, I know it, it rubs me when my wife has to tell me, okay, you've done this thing, and uh, I now have to humble, bring down the ego. Uh, okay, so I don't know if you know what I mean because you are a very, very humble man. But the thing is, you gotta bring down the okay. ego, my brother, and uh, say, pin your mouth and open your ears and listen. You got to speak to yourself, right, Alec? Again, you got to speak to yourself, listen. She may not be absolutely correct in everything that she is saying, but the thing is, she is giving some instruction that may help you if you really listen. Intentional communication, increase you in your social activities together in building a very stronger bond in your marriage. Amen. All right, so we have just about 15 minutes to go in this discussion. So Sister Linda, I'm gonna ask you a question and then we're gonna get some or we will get some thoughts also from the men. If a woman does not appreciate her own value, can she recognize when her husband is treating her according to her value? That's a very good question. Very good question. Very good question. Um, <clears throat> the thing is that a woman can know intellectually her value, but not believe it. Correct. Because, because of circumstances, traumas, wrong ideas, misunderstandings, etc. So let me read that question again. If a woman does not appreciate her own value, can she recognize when her husband is treating her according to her value? So it would muddy the water a little bit, but a woman even that doesn't necessarily claim her true value can still recognize and feel when she's being devalued, hmm. when she's not being treated, um, when she's not a priority, when she's not being cherished, when she doesn't receive attention. She knows, she knows that these things are hurtful she knows, even if she doesn't understand that she's valued with all the treasure of heaven. She has an innate sense that she should be treated in, in a, with, with love. Now, I know, I know that there's a lot of damaged minds out there, right? And there's there's things like severe codependency and battered woman syndrome mm. and, and these types of things where the woman or the man, you know, the person um, <clears throat> is so convinced in their mind that they deserve to be punished and mistreated and so on that they, you know, it, it's just a very mixed up situation. They do not recognize that their value would require them to be treated differently very, very true nice. very true and like so looking at the same question let's put some let's dissect it a bit and and throw some practical examples in the sense where because to me it seems like the question is suggesting that in some case 
women are insecure and they have a low self-esteem. Now, self-esteem could be a selfish aggrandizement, you know, a, a puffed up kind of thing, but we're talking about Christian women here and self-esteem, having, valuing themselves. If a woman has a low self-esteem and doesn't appreciate her own gifts and abilities, and she has a husband trying with all his might to do all in his power to make her feel value, but for some reason, she just doesn't believe it. A scenario like that, is there a remedy? Yeah, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But I, I, I want to speak to, I, if you don't mind, I want to speak to that same question because it kind of lends to what you would have asked and what was your original question. Now, let, let, let's suppose that a woman have been, has been scarred in her experience with her husband. Something would have happened or a continual kind of scenario that the woman now is at the place where I, can, I do not even know how to appreciate that you are really trying hard to give me the value that I am created with and that I know that I have. So in her mind, she blanks out all his affirmations, all his um, kindness, his nice, all the things that Linda listed, she looks at it as, as she, it is not even, it is not there. So that's a situation now that needs some direct attention, just like the question that you would have asked, because it means that that hurt is so deep. I'm not speaking about a hurt that you would have gotten in a childhood experience or former marriage within the context of your marriage, whether it's one year, 10 years, you have been so mistreated or certain things that would have caused scars, infidelity or whatever. It is difficult now to trust that you are really showing me this type of attention because in our mind is saying it's a little too late or mm -hmm. um, I, I don't believe it, you know, mm -hmm. because we're going to go down that road again. So that, that's where um, some, some help is required. Um, it's really needed. Really oh, and the leech, just a few seconds. A woman, a man is trying with all his might to do what he deems best to, to, show, to show his wife that he has value in her. But for some reason, she just doesn't believe him. Does he stop? Does he give up? Does he say, well, it doesn't matter what I do? Yes, Elican? No, don't give up. Don't stop. It can be a very frustrating experience, yes, and it can be, I mean, there will be the temptation at times that what's the point, what's, what's the worth? Might as well just give up, but don't give up. Um, as Sister Linda mentioned, a woman will know when she's being undervalued or when she's being devalued. But even though she might know that, it still doesn't necessarily mean that she can really, that a person who is damaged will re can really appreciate when they're being valued too. Because sometimes, mm -hmm. as we've heard in different ways from different persons, that you know we have all kind of damage. We come, people come from different situations, you know, different experiences are damaged, and sometimes there it is pretty, you know, quite, quite certain that there are times when someone is just no matter what, a man, you're doing all you can or, or everything you can, and the person is just not there. They're just not emotionally able to appreciate it because of what they've been through or what um, other things have registered in their minds, like what other hurts or woundedness there is within them. But the, the reality, the idea is that don't give up because I mean, the battle is lost once you give up. I mean, with prayer. Amen. And you know, um, so don't give up. All right. So all the contributions have been very important. But we want to end on, a, we have five minutes and we want to look at this question because I believe that this question will carry us into a few avenues and we will hear from the entire panel as we look at this scenario because here is the question about a woman or women who devalue themselves because they are overworked, overburdened for whatever reason they are, as you say, just not emotionally there. How about when a man comes home and the woman is in a messy dress 
children are crying. There's food or the food isn't finished. It's not cooked. There are toys all around. So this is more like a family dynamic where the, there's a home of children and the husband comes home from a hard day of work. Are there methods that can be implemented to deal with such a situation? Now, we want to hear the female perspective. Sister Linda, this is your presentation. And you would have communicated with all these women that you counsel. Is there a reason why some women act like this? <laughs> no, there's definitely a reason. <laughs> it sounds to me like a woman who is, she's gangs. She doesn't seem to have a reason to um, take care of herself. And she, she's probably just overwhelmed. And um, maybe, maybe she's in some very deep depression. Hmm. Maybe she's really struggling with um, some, some hard trauma that she even experienced young or <clears throat> maybe maybe there's something going on in her marriage is, that's just so undermining her her security and her sense of of um yeah self-worth so sister mm -hmm. Linda, as a woman who has been married for a number of years and someone who counsels and consults with other wives um, have you heard some of the deliberate reasons why they do this? And is there something the husband can do to break through as a, a phase or how to put it? Maybe they're going through just a phase, a time in which there, is there something a man can do, their husband can do to break through um, in a situation like this? Well, in a situation like this, we're, we're presupposing what's going on and there could be so many variables, but... Um, <clears throat> if you will look down through my presentation, you will see she needs attention. Mm. She needs appreciation. She needs a break. She needs um, someone to talk to. She needs <clears throat> to, to know that somebody recognizes her skills, her abilities, that she's capable of something, that she can do something. She needs someone to take the children sometimes mm. and work with them. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I can imagine this scenario that you just presented being a fairly, not necessarily deeply emotionally scarred cause, just overwhelm and things are not going right and whatever, and, and I can totally imagine a husband coming in, yes, he's tired, but he's, he, he starts to pay attention to his wife, he's, he takes the baby and feeds the baby, he helps her finish the food, he, I mean, just getting involved in the scenario and what's going on, and bringing some peace and rest to the thing for the present moment. But of course, but of course, there has to be a study made of what's going on deeply. What is happening for this woman, right? He would need, if he, if the man wants to take on the task of trying to um, <clears throat> nurture and he's going to have to to do some real studying and spend some time to get you know if if she's just absolutely not handling things find someone to help her and and spend some time get her get her some coaching <laughs> get her some get her some some connection with different thoughts you know because you can't get you can't change anything with the same thoughts that got you into the situation so she obviously needs new thoughts new ideas she needs support encouragement mm -hmm. 
She yeah. needs first and foremost to know that somebody values her, somebody hears her, somebody is willing to understand and not judge her and criticize her. And um, don't come in and just tell her to buck up and um, figure this out and, <laughs> you know? Yes. I, that's how you would talk to a man. You know, man up. Correct. So we all agree that there are so many scenarios that can be at the core of what would cause men or women to express themselves in a certain way. And I hope that men and women who are listening tonight could have mercy on each other. Last week, we for the last two weeks, we heard the male's perspective and therefore it would have been male dominated in the perspective. And now tonight we are hearing from you, Sister Linda, the female's perspective and the value of the health meet. All right, so as we wrap up on this question, I'm gonna allow Ella Kisto, Ella Leach, Ella Ken, and then allow you, Linda, to give your closing thoughts. In that order, you know, I'll allow you to just share whatever thoughts come to your mind on that scenario and the possible methods that can be implemented to sort of break the ice and create some form of solace to a wife who is going through an experience like that. Um. If it is a scenario, let me close my mouth. If, this is, if it is a scenario that is happening every day, as opposed to a one-off, you know, things really didn't go right today, we had a bad day, then, um, and as Linda said, I can't presuppose what the scenario might be, but it, 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 it tells me that this woman, if it's an everyday thing, she just goes to sleep to get up the next day to do the same thing and always have to be rushing and things are just falling apart that, that that's a time for a timeout you know by we have to define what a timeout means but it really needs a timeout of pulling back from that space that space is toxic um i cannot even sit down here to talk about that situation she's seen in her mind she needs to be removed from there um the, the man really has to evaluate himself what is he contributing to it has he given her all the tools? Linda said, does she have all the tools? Does she still have to, should, <laughs> she, is she working without tools? That causes her day to be so very long every day. So these are some of the things that we can look at. And if I go to just give a, a, a 30 second remark, I think this was a, a, a powerful night and two things could happen. You could either say, listen, you know, I, I, this is talking to me as a man or try to or try to justify by some means why you're not doing what you're doing or i try to do it but i get in resistance you know we just need to take it it has come from the lord through a servant and uh, from a male perspective um i saw some of the comments on the on on the chat you know it it you know had me thinking um but men need to to really take this one to heart and save their marriage thanks But uh, I, I think that El Kiso did a very good job there in summing up there. And uh, what I would like to say also is this, that we are all broken. We've all had experiences. And the faster we can recognize our brokenness, our own personal brokenness, the quicker we can heal. You cannot heal a person that does not know that they're sick. Now, oftentimes, we find ourselves in a psychological sickness. And uh, we don't recognize it until we see the symptoms. And some of those symptoms are what was mentioned in that question. It may be time management, maybe a, a problem, uh, maybe instruction could assist, but that is not the first place to go. It, it, it can be the, the beginnings of uh, depression and uh, you have to understand or find out why. The person can be overwhelmed because depression is now a step further than being overwhelmed. So being overwhelmed with all of the duties and of course a lack of time management bring you into that state of being overwhelmed because I can't get anything done because on a daily basis you're dealing with the children, you're dealing with the house. It is not that you can do clean the house and it remains clean. You know, you can go to work and you say, okay, yeah, I've done a project and it is finished, but you don't ever finish work at home. 
you don't ever finish. And therefore that can also have a particular psychological impact. And that is why men need to understand that when they come home and they see their wives all fettered and uh, you know, it seems as though they're scattered and uh, they, they just need some of your assistance to know like what Linda has said that hey, I'm going to stand in there for you. I'm going to be there with you. I am there too. We're going to do this together. That sense of uh, appreciation and uh, significance to your significant one can also bring you out of that overwhelm feeling. So I believe that there must be more empathy, understanding among uh, in the hearts of men for their women, recognizing that they are the more fragile uh, partners and uh, we are really there for them, give them that understanding and things will go better. Thank you. I think um, really, I think between both of you gentlemen, you've uh, made my work easy because you pretty much summed up for me. I, I like what Elkista said. Um, he made a distinction between this being a one-time thing and something that happens every day, which would be an indication that there's really a chronic problem there somewhere in, you know, if it's if every evening comes home and that's what the situation is. I mean, there are a number of possible reasons that might be causing that. I mean, <laughs> watching soap opera all day, on the phone or Facebook all day or whatever, just saying that, but not saying that's case. But the reality is that that kind of situation calls for intentional communication again, not this time just merely about from the standpoint of this, the, um, you know, just seeking to, well, for the same purpose actually, to help us to bond, but not to be critical, but to seek to understand. And as we just heard, to seek to empathize and get to the bottom of what might be the issues what might be causing. One person said here, maybe the person, I think one of the comments said, maybe a person might be going through depression or whatever. But I think the key to every such situation is seeking to understand, seeking to empathize and, 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 and communicate and, and try to understand what might be, what that dynamics might be driving the situation or that person so that this is always the case. And maybe there are changes that usually can be made and changes can be made to, to improve the situation. It could be that the person is, yes, as we've heard over and over again, overwhelmed. And there might be restructuring that needs to be done in terms of their responsibilities and, and, and stuff like that to make things a little more manageable, a little bit easier. Because with children, as part of the question stated, that can make things like exponentially more difficult, you know, keeping a home as it's supposed to be kept when your children, when your children involved. But as always, um, chicken. All right, as always. What 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 may stop? I look at on mute your mic. Yes, it takes a lot of patience and understanding, and we're all guilty. We're not perfect. We all of us, as Elder Leach said, all of us are um, you know, are working through our own situations. But since Linda's presentation is that as men, we need to really look into ourselves and be men maybe in a different kind of way that we've thought men are supposed to be, be more understanding, more patient, and seek to treasure our significant, you know, other, our, our females, our wives, our spouses. And um, I guess there's a, a very well-placed balance to what we've heard over the last two weeks prior. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Ella Ken, for sharing those thoughts with us. And thank you, Sister Nella, for jumping in for us when we needed you most. Thank you very much, Sister Linda, for sharing your thoughts tonight, brethren. I truly honestly believe that it was a powerful presentation and the Lord would have spoken. And if we should truly decide to take these thoughts at heart, it will make changes in our marriages. I believe that the Lord you know, is really doing a work among us and he's seeking to prepare us, making us all rounded for what we are about to face. Before I close off totally, I'm going to ask Sister Linda if she has any 
closing thoughts that she would like to leave with us before she goes? Yes. When the women are spoken to, they, it, it's hard for them to hear. When the men are spoken to, it's hard for them to hear. There's two sides to every story. There's um, two imperfect people in every marriage. And every marriage has its challenges. And some of them are extremely debilitated. But somebody has to step up. Somebody has to initiate. Somebody has to make a start and start treating the other one differently. It takes some strength. It takes some courage. It takes the love of God. It takes knowing your own value so that it, your own value isn't on the table to be, you know, it, it, it's already determined. It, it, and tonight I spoke to the men. Often I speak to the women. I, I counsel the women how to be the one to step up and make the start. And tonight I'm speaking to the men how to be the one to step up and make the start. I know your wife is not perfect. I know that uh, my presentation did not perfectly cover every scenario. Mm -hmm. um, but if you men will not make excuses and try to be an exception to, to the things that I shared, if you will find in them powerful secrets and tools to touch your wife's heart, you will be able to make a huge difference in your marriage. I believe that. And yes, I know there are always those women and there are always those men who just will not decide to respond. But I encourage you, if, you're, if your wife is not a Christian, if your husband is not a Christian, it doesn't matter. Non-Christian hearts respond to love also. And the Bible says to the woman, if, if, um, she, if the husband wants her to stay and if she can stay and win him, then she, she could stay. And so I just, I just want to encourage everybody not to just have an emotional reaction and, and to lose the blessing of, of um, two weeks ago, Elder Leach speaking to the women and tonight me speaking to the men because you have been given powerful, powerful insight, powerful tools for making a huge difference in your marriage. And the fact is that what you're doing now is probably not fixing it and you need something different. So I'm gonna pray for you all and um, I'm going to trust that God is going to send all these things by the Holy Spirit to your hearts and encourage you. And if there's any way that I can encourage or help any one, I would be happy to do so. And I will, I have a couple assignments that I wanted to suggest for men. So, and, and also that list of questions. So you have to let me know how I can make those available. Maybe next week. Thank you, Sister Linda. Um, would you send those assignments via email? Is there any way persons can contact you if they want to participate in doing the assignment? Are you hearing me, Sister Linda? Sure. They can email me. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I hear you. Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Yes. I will be happy to email the assignments. I'll be happy to email them to you. Um, if anybody wants to contact me directly, they can contact me at the number four, jlmission at gmail.com. The number four, jl, James Linda, jl, mission, m-i-s-s-i-o-n, at gmail.com. And I'd be happy to send you, um, I have a couple 
assignments for the men to do to attention and appreciation for their wife. And I also have that list of questions that I highly recommend. Thank you very much, Sister Linda. I was trying to type her um, email address in the chat. I hope that is correct. Sister Linda, check it for me and make sure yeah. that it is correct. Thank you again, Sister Linda, for having shared those thoughts with us tonight. I can tell that they were coming from a real place and we truly appreciate those thoughts. Brethren, we want to thank the Holy Spirit for giving us the opportunity, you know, that we would have had to share our thoughts tonight and to even ask our questions. We want to thank you for asking those questions that you asked. And we want to thank our panelists for so ably answering our questions. If your question wasn't answered, rest assured that we are going to have a session where we try to answer the questions um, and uh, an open session where we can answer some questions that might not have been answered. Um, I am trusting that our recording tonight will be the best quality that, that we can sit and watch over. We're gonna make that video available for you to be able to watch it. Um, somebody asked in the chat how they can watch the video. You can, I'm going to type as soon as I finish praying, the name of the YouTube channel where you can go and you can rewatch those presentations. Join us again okay. next week. Go ahead, Sister Linda. Sorry, um, the recording was interrupted several times and we stopped to restart the recording. Does that mean it's going to be in several sections? I am going to look at it when I'm finished to see how it is, if it is able to be uploaded. If, if, if you are willing, if it is not able to be uploaded because of the quality, however, if you are interested as an individual <clears throat> to have it, I can send it to you just so you can watch it in your own private space if it is not of the quality to be uploaded. All right. All right, brethren, we want you to join us again next week. We're going to be having a very interesting panel discussion. It is, it is going to be informative. It is going to be insightful. It is going to be, by God's grace, solid biblical principles. So we're inviting you to join us next week. And we're asking you to invite somebody to join us next week as well. Brethren, do have a wonderful night. And we're going to ask Sister Linda to close us out with, with prayer. All right, let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, you created marriage. And we need your tutelage. Father, have mercy upon us. Help us to be able to know we are important enough and valuable enough even to make mistakes and be wrong without being cast off. Help us to be able to make new decisions and determine to try new things and not make excuses and not be have our ego and our pride offended and give us the courage to take a chance it is so hard for us to open up and love the other one with the fear of rejection but you Lord, you have done that. And so you can give us the strength. And I pray that you will be with every single person that has heard these messages and that you will have through your mighty power make a huge change in our marriages. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you very much again, Sister Linda. And brethren, do have a wonderful night. God bless you. I'll be typing the name of the YouTube channel in the chat just so you can watch a presentation. God bless. Kamika, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Um, is there a way to get a copy of the chat? I could download it.
Would you please? All right. Because while I was presenting, I did not obviously get to read it. All right, I downloaded it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, bye. All right.